Mina, Claude Benoit, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Psalm 59 is the psalm of the night. And this is a message, I don't think I've preached on it before, but maybe I have. And it would be very good of me to do this every now and then anyway, because what I'm going to touch on today, I personally feel like this is one of the biggest, um, what is the word I'm looking for? One of the biggest points where Christians kind of trip up and stumble and I also think it's um, a tripping up point for a lot of non-Christians who thought about being Christians, but because of this issue, they have not become Christians. And so, without further ado, with that kind of a, an intro, it's Psalm 59, it's going to be verses 9 and 10. I will wait for you, O you his strength, for God is my defense. My God of mercy shall come to meet me. God shall let me see my desire on my enemies. I'm not focusing on the seeing your desire on your enemies part. That I feel like yesterday's message kind of addressed that pretty well, or one of my two messages yesterday. Try to leave that in the link in the description below. I'm focusing more on the waiting part and the fact that God hasn't done it yet. I will wait for you. David's talking about waiting. God is his defense. God is his strength. Or it says, or you owe you his strength. That it's interesting the way that's phrased. To briefly address that, that's the particular Hebrew verse that they're looking at here. There are some variations in that verse. So, and one of them, one of those variations does say, my strength. So his strength could be referring to Israel, or perhaps it should read my strength and referring to his own personal strength. So, however you want to dice that, he is a part of Israel, and certainly he would consider God his strength. So please don't get too hung up on that particular detail. David is waiting on God. God is his defense. And he says, my God of mercy shall come to meet me. So he hasn't come yet. Things are still looking bad. He is still currently waiting on his strength, his defense, the mercy giver, because those things have not happened yet. And I've seen a lot of Christians and a lot of non-Christians stumble on this point, because when they say a prayer, when things are going bad, and if it doesn't immediately fix itself, or sometimes the situation appears to or does finish, it climaxes, and things didn't end up the way we wanted them to. Things did not end up well. Sometimes things went very bad. And because of that, people walk away. Either they were Christians and they're not, or they were Christians and they never renounced their faith and they really don't live for it very well. Some people who were considering to be Christians, they see all this crap happen and they're just like, you know what, forget it. I want no part of this. I'm out. And they fail to wait on the Lord. The Lord does come through. The Lord does defend. He does have mercy. He is our strength. But He doesn't do things on our time frame. He does them on His. And He does know better than us. Even when our deadlines pass, even when, even when our hearts you know, have broken and the tears have started coming out, that doesn't mean God's abandoned you. That, mean God, that means God is seeing you through this certain circumstance, and if you will wait for him, he will turn the whole thing around for your good. He will make it all right. And even if things, even if all the circumstances aren't made all right, your heart and where you are in, in relation to him and your relation to other people, believers and non-believers, you'll be made right, even if the situation is not. His promise isn't to make everything okay. His promise is to help you and to give you grace and peace. And just because you have to shed a few tears and go through some hard times, it doesn't mean he's abandoned you. It means he's giving you the grace to go through it, and he expects you to wait on him. He expects you to believe in him and to trust him and to know that he's got your back. Part of faith is trust. You know, you not just believe that he, just to quote Hebrews eleven six, you don't just believe that he is, that he exists. You believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. 
That's a continuous process. You keep on seeking Him. When things don't go well, when you feel like you haven't been defended, when you feel like you're weak and have no strength, when you see nothing but wrath and judgment and you don't see any mercy whatsoever, you diligently seek Him and you wait on Him. Because at the end of that road, He is right there. And He does have the answer or answers you're looking for. But you must wait. It's not an easy thing to receive, but it is of the utmost importance to understand that sometimes God just doesn't give us the answer we want or any answer at all right away. Sometimes we have to wait. And again, this is a message I will probably, I may, I may copy this almost verbatim in the future because this is such an important message. And I think this is almost always a timely message, not to trying to pull upon or play on words here. But this message is almost always important to keep in mind because God's time frame isn't ours. And we need to believe in him, have faith in him, and trust him that he really will come through and that he really is on our side the whole way. And he will meet us at the end of this road and things will be better for us according to his plan, not ours. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I love you. God bless.